In this tutorial, I will explain about projection of ordinary plates. In general, we will use front view and top view for the complete description of the object. But in some special cases, these two views are not sufficient to completely describe the object. We have to go for some additional views called as auxiliary views. The planes which are used to obtain these auxiliary views are called as auxiliary planes. So that means we can define the auxiliary plane as the additional reference plane. These are classified into auxiliary planes are classified into two types. First one is auxiliary inclined plane. We will call that as AIP. Auxiliary inclined plane means if you assume that this is your horizontal plane, then the plane which is inclined to HP and perpendicular to VP. If you observe this, this is inclined only to HP. This is perpendicular to VP. This is called as the auxiliary inclined plane. So as it is perpendicular to VP, something like this, we are getting new reference line with respect to VP and this auxiliary plane somewhere here. Somewhere here. That we will call as the X1, Y1 and with respect to that you have to rotate it something like this to get the auxiliary view on the paper. Okay. So always, suppose if you take HP and VP, these two are perpendicular at 90 degrees. That's why we are rotating like this. If you take auxiliary inclined plane, it is making some angle with respect to HP. That's why with respect to HP you can't tilt this plane. But it is 90 degrees with VP. So with respect to VP you have to tilt it like this. Okay. So by solving the problem, you can understand this concept clearly. Okay, that is about auxiliary inclined plane. So this is inclined to HP and perpendicular to VP. Okay. The view which you are going to obtain on this, that is called as, a, as an auxiliary top view. So here we are going to get another top view. Next, second auxiliary plane is auxiliary vertical plane. In short, we will call this as ABP. This is inclined to VP perpendicular to HP. So, auxiliary inclined plane will be something like this. If you assume this is VP, then this will make some angle with respect to VP. Observe here, this is making some angle with respect to VP, but this is perpendicular to HP. This is perpendicular to HP. If it is HP, it is perpendicular to HP, it is making some angle with respect to VP. That's why the perpendicular it is maintaining with respect to HP. So you have to tilt it like this. You have to tilt it like this with respect to HP to get the view on the same tap, same plane. After that, you can tilt HP and this on to the implant plane, something like this, to represent this on the paper. Okay. The view which you are going to get on this we will call as the auxiliary front view. This we will call as the auxiliary front view. So this is the brief introduction about the two auxiliary planes. This is a pentagon. Now I will solve this pentagonal plane problem using both the methods. Now I will solve the problem using the change of position method that is our general method. After that I will take the auxiliary plane method. The pentagon position is something like this. Side is 40 mm and it is inclined 30 degrees to HP. Side 40 inclined 30 degrees to HP. Surface is inclined 30 degrees to HP. Edge is B. Edge is 60 degrees to B. So that means simple question is you have to be parallel to HP. As the surface is parallel to HP, you get the true shape and size in the top view. Start the problem from the top view. This is RP. This is A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Next. As the surface is parallel, you can take the front view some distance above the x y line. This is b dash, a dash, this is c dash, e dash, this is d dash. Okay. In the second stage, you have to tilt the surface to 30 degrees. This is b dash, 
a dash this is c dash t dash this bond is d dash so draw the projector like this this is a b here c this is d this is e a b c d e and a this is the reduced shape in the third step you have to till the edge to 60 degrees draw a 60 degree line somewhere here i will take a here b here to here to distance you take draw a line somewhere here you will get e here c Take this distance, mark that here. This is D, A, B, C, D, E, A. Then draw the projectors. This projector of A. This is the locus of A. This is A dash. Here I will get B dash. Then somewhere here I will get C dash. This is D dash. Here I will get E dash. Now A, B, C, D, E, and A. This is the final front. This is change of position method. This is change of position method. You are changing the position of the object. Okay. Now I will solve the same problem. Using the auxiliary plane method. Finally, you have to get this solution in the auxiliary plane method also. Okay. In the auxiliary plane method, we have to do some rough sketch. You have to draw a rough sketch to get the idea of the positions of the object. Just I am doing that. Just I am doing some rough work such that where exactly I have to start the problem. So according to my rough work, I have to start the problem somewhere here. Then final answer I will get somewhere here. Okay. So after solving this problem, you, you will get the idea how to do this rough work. This is my XY line. Somewhere here I am drawing the top view, same top view which I have drawn earlier. This is A, B, C, D, and D. This side is 40 degrees. This side is 40 mm. Okay. Now project the front view. This is B dash, A dash. This point is C dash, D dash. This point is D dash. Okay, now in the ordinary plane method, what you are doing is instead of tilting the object, instead of tilting the object to 30 degrees in the second stage, you are keeping the object in the same position, you are tilting the plane, you are introducing a new plane, ordinary inclined plane. Because in inclination with respect to HP, you are, you want to represent. When it is inclined with respect to HP, you will get the reduced top view in the second stage. So you are going to get the auxiliary top view. So that's why you have to introduce auxiliary inclined plane like this. Okay, observe whether these two are tilted, then this angle is 30 degrees. I am keeping the object like this. I am tilting the plane. I am introducing auxiliary inclined plane such that the angle between this object and this plane is 30 degrees only. That means we are getting ultimately whether you are changing the position of the object or introducing the auxiliary plane we are getting the angle between the object and this plane is 30 degrees only so that is the advantage of going for the auxiliary plane so i will introduce a new plane somewhere here like this at an angle of 30 degrees the angle between these two is 30 degrees so this plane i will call as x1 y1 this is x1 y1 new plane so always the projectors with respect to this reference line are 90 degrees am i correct 
Now I am going to draw the project cards with respect to new reference line x1 y1 means we have to align your mini drafter. You have to align your mini drafter to this particular line. So keep the mini drafter like this. Keep the mini drafter like this. This particular scale is parallel to this x1 y1. Using this scale, you have to draw the projectors from b dash, c dash, e dash, and d dash. Okay. Now I am drawing the projectors. That means perpendicular lines to x1 y1, something like this. Something like this. This angle is 90 degrees. Okay. So this is the front view. This is x1 y1 line. That means automatically what you are going to get here auxiliary top view. Here you are going to get auxiliary top view. So when you are going to get the top view here, then take the previous top view distances from previous x y line. So that means here I want to get point A. Then take the distance of point A which is the previous top view. From the previous x y line means x1 x y. Now the current reference line is x1 y1. Previous means x y. Okay. x y to a distance you take. Something like this with compass. Then move to a dash. Then move to the new reference line. From here onwards you draw the r. That will be intersected somewhere here. This is a. Okay. I want to get b point. Then take x y to b distance with compass like this. Move to b dash point. Then move to the new reference line. From here onwards with this radius draw an arc. Then you will get B point somewhere here. Okay. Next, I want to get C. X Y to C distance you take with compass. Then move to C dash. Then move to the new reference line. From here onwards with this point as center, draw an arc. That will intersect somewhere here C. Then I want point E. Take the small distance. X Y to the small distance. Move to E dash, then move to the new reference line from here, draw the arc. That will intersect somewhere here. Then I want point D, take the distance of point D from XY, move to D dash, then move to the new reference line from here onwards, draw the arc. That is D. Now join A, B, C, D, E, and A. Okay. So this is the radius of top view. Which we are which we are usually getting in the second stage. Okay, next. In the third stage, what we are doing? We are tilting this edge to 60 degrees. So that's why you take this edge like this. Draw a 60 degree line to this. This is the 60 degree line to this. Call that as x2 y2. Call this new reference line as x2 y2. Okay. This is now top view. On this side, you will going to get front view. Okay. Now draw the perpendiculars. Now align your mini drafter like this. Align your mini drafter like this. This side is parallel to this. Using this particular scale, from all these points, draw the projectors. Okay. From A, I am drawing a projector. That means 90 degrees to this. From B, this is the projector. From C, this is the projector. From D, this is the projector. From E, this is the projector. Okay. Something in this way, from all these five points, draw the projectors. After that, here I am going to get the auxiliary front view. For x line, for this particular x line, this side you are going to have, you are have this side you are having the top view. Obviously, on the other side you are going to get the front view. So here you are going to get front view. That's why take the previous front view distances from the previous reference line. This is x2 y2. Previous reference line is x1 y1. x1 y1 to the previous front view is this a dash b dash c dash a b dash. So this front view distances you have to take from Take with respect to this x1 y1 reference line. Okay, I want to get a dash. For that, what I have to do is x1 y1 to this a dash, this small distance. You take with compass. 
then move to A point, then move to the new reference line, something like this. From here, take this point in the center and draw the arc that will intersect somewhere here. This is A dash. Okay. Now I want to get B dash. Same, B dash distance is also same with respect to this x1, y1. Then move to B point, then move to the new reference line. From here on, we'll draw the arc. Then somewhere here, we will get B dash. This is A dash, that is B dash. Next, I want to get C dash point. This is the distance of C dash and E dash. Okay. Take this distance, this spectral distance from x1, y1 to this distance. Go to point C, then go to the new reference line, then draw the arc. Somewhere here, you will get C dash. Next, E dash is also at the same distance. Go to E, then go to the new reference line. Somewhere here, you will get E dash. Dash. Now take the distance of D dash. This is the distance of D dash. Go to D, then go to the new reference line, something like this. From here, draw the arc. Here you will get D dash. Okay. Now join A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash, E dash, and A dash. Now observe. The same shape which you, have, which you have obtained in the change of position method in the final front view, here also you got the same shape using the ordinary 